This video is now going to introduce what really you see, particularly deep underground, which are mixed wettability conditions. So to date, we've sort of assumed that there's one phase one, water that's wetting. We have another phase two that could be oil or gas that's non-wetting. But in the earlier videos, we did emphasize the fact that in the subsurface, particularly in the presence of organic material, we see a mixture of wettability. So let's just be a little bit more precise about this and then talk about the implications in terms of displacement processes. So I'm going to define something that's called mixed wettability. The mixed wettability is where the contact angle, and this, remember, is measured through phase one, the denser phase water in general, is both less than 90 degrees and greater than 90 degrees in different regions of the pore space. So if you look at the, the solid surface, they're going to be regions that are hydrophobic or oil wet. So they like oil and they potentially actually also like gas, but they don't like uh, water and vice versa. Okay. So mixed wettability conditions are where we have contact angles that go both less than 90 degrees and greater than 90 degrees. And my opinion, that is the typical situation that you encounter in the subsurface. But what does this mean in terms of pore scale configurations and displacement? Primary drainage is normally a drainage process. The gas or the oil moves into a porous medium fully saturated with water, and it is the non-wetting phase. But then there can be this wettability change. And so that if phase one, if water goes back into the pore space, it's not necessarily going back as a purely wetting phase. So how does it behave if it in fact is the non-wetting phase, if we have contact angles that are greater than 90 degrees? So let's look at this in terms of our classic pore. And let's draw a nice big pore here. So we can imagine a case where initially the non-wetting phase has moved in. We've had primary drainage. And what we do is we then confine the wetting phase, phase one, the water, to the corners of the pore space here. Okay. So this is this is phase one. And phase two, the gas or the oil is in the center. Now imagine that there's a wettability alteration. And so the surface that have been in direct contact with phase two change their wettability and we're going to assume they change their wettability so that in this particular pore it's not necessarily true in every pore or in every place but in this particular pore the contact angles are greater than 90 so we'll call this here these are regions where that contact angle is greater now i'm going to re-inject phase one phase one goes to push oil out of an oil reservoir or we have carbon dioxide or hydrogen that's migrating or withdrawn from the pore, from the pore space. What's going to happen? Well, we increase the pressure in phase one. And so this begins to go like this, and it will even begin to bulge out. We have a hinging angle here because the water pressure becomes larger than the pressure of the oil or gas. The pressure in phase one becomes greater than the pressure in phase two. So P2 minus P1, which is the capillary pressure, is now less than zero. We actually have to force phase one into the pore space. Now, the way I discussed it previously, you sort of thought, well, maybe this is bulges out until we reach the advancing contact angle, and then it can move across this surface. That can happen, but if you think about it, this is a tiny radius of curvature. So it requires actually a very large and negative capillary pressure, so a huge pressure in the water. So actually what happens is a piston-like drainage process. If I'm injecting water, surely water can move in through the centres of the pore space in a drainage, piston-like type displacement. So in fact, that's exactly what happens. So what we have here is that the water will move into the centers of the pore space like this. Here, this is 
phase one, the water. Okay, so this is phase one. This is the contact angle here. This is my advancing contact angle. Okay, and it's greater than 90 degrees, notice. The curvature of this interface will be the same as the curvature of this interface. The contact angle here will be a hinging contact angle, which will actually be less than the advancing angle, but greater than the receding value. So this is a H here, hinging angle. So what we see here is that water has gone through the center of the pore space in a piston-like advance. So this is technically a drainage type process with a capillary pressure that's approximately two sigma cos theta A divided by the inscribed radius of the pore. So we can, we can write that down. So we have a capillary pressure, which is roughly a two sigma cos theta A over the radius of whatever element the pore will throat. And remember, if cos theta is, sorry, theta is greater than 90 degrees, cos theta is negative. So this is a negative capillary pressure. Okay, so what do we leave behind here? Well, what's here? Here is phase two. Okay, so here we have phase two. So we have layers of phase two. And this can be oil. We can also see layers of, say, supercritical CO2. So, so CO2 at high pressures and temperatures, which actually has a sort of liquid-like density. So you can see this with CO2 as well. So you can see here in the pore space, phase one, the water is in the center, also in the corners, and it leaves behind layers of the oil or gas. So what are the consequences for this? Well, the first one is that by leaving these layers, which sort of makes sense because phase two is, is wetting to the surface. It likes the surface, okay? By doing this, it's more difficult for phase two to be trapped because you don't have so much slap off. You only have slap off in the water wet regions. You have this piston-like advance and these layers retain the connectivity. Now, they don't retain connectivity ad infinitum. You can see here, as if I continue to increase the pressure in phase one, these layers will get thinner and thinner. And say here, the layer could completely collapse, basically the two menisci touch. So there's no guarantee that these layers stay there forever, but they do tend to retain connectivity. And the result is that the amount of phase two that you can actually trap within the port space is less than when you have a strongly water wet medium. And so the residual saturation of phase two, S2R, is normally in the range of somewhere between 20% and maybe 10% or lower. So if we just have oil layers everywhere, we can have, say, a 10% or even less than that residual saturation, but it's normally in this range, and that's the saturation which is residual. So this is the residual saturation. It's not zero because these layers will collapse, but it is um, lower than we see for equivalent water wet media, which if you recall from the previous video is normally in the range of about 50 to 20%, so 0 0.5 to 0 0.2. The second thing is the nature of the displacement. This clearly looks like a piston-like. It looks like a sort of invasion percolation type event. But there is a subtlety, which we're going to discuss further when we try, try and quantify flow conductance. And I'm just going to do it in a little schematic here with a sort of mini network. Okay, so imagine this is my arrangement of pores, but just a mini network here, so I'm not going to say too much. If we have mixed wettability, there are really two extremes. The first extreme is something where, in fact, it's not really mixed wet. It's all contact angles greater than 90 degrees. So this would be hydro, strongly hydrophobic materials, right? Materials that don't like gas, don't like oil. In that case, yeah, the only way in which phase one, the water can advance through the pore space is basically piston-like advance. So if we have a strongly hydrophobic material, so if we're or greater than 90 degrees, so this is hydrophobic, 
or oil wet sometimes we use if we're, we're doing it in oil reservoirs, then indeed what we have is an invasion percolation advance. So from the previous video, it's invasion percolation. Water basically is now the non-wetting phase and it's essentially invading the largest pores and throats as it goes through the pore space. And in this case, it is always invading the pores. Okay. However, what happens if it's mixed wet? It's mixed wet, it's a little bit different. If it's mixed wet, we do have some pores that are water wet. And so to begin with, what's most favourable? Well, of course, the water wants to go in the water wet regions. It likes it, it's easier, it's a lower water pressure. Okay, so in a positive capillary pressure, you'd actually get some snap off events. So you can actually do some filling like this and that's what would happen first. Then, when you want to fill the hydrophobic regions, this region here can be filled by piston-like advance from the regions that have been filled when it was water wet. So what happens is you can initiate filling throughout the pore space. And if it's hydrophobic, in fact, it's preferable to fill the wide regions first. So it's a little bit, it seems a bit sort of counterintuitive, but it does make sense. The water wet regions, you fill the narrow regions by snap off. If we wet percolation, now you want to fill the hydrophobic regions, you want to fill the larger regions because now the capillary pressure is, is small, albeit negative. But where you fill by snap off, that can be a source for a piston like advance to fill the wide regions. So you start filling wide regions all over the pore space. You might say, whoa, 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 how is that possible? How can I, how can I fill, say, this throat from here by piston like advance? You can, the water's connected here, but it is connected through layers as well. So through wetting layers, these layers here, the water can flow, go through here, and then you can have a piston like advance. So it's a sort of, you have a thin layer, then you fill the center of the pore space, and from there you can push, all right? It's as though you sort of mustered your water in the center of the pore space, and from then it can push out into the wide regions. So if it's mixed wet, it's sort of filling everywhere throughout the pore's medium. So in fact, if it's mixed wet ability, the process is more like ordinary percolation. Now, of course, there's substances here. You might say, yeah, but what happens if it's mainly water wet and or maybe it's mainly hydrophobic, so there are fewer regions. So clearly it's a mix. It's quite a complex process in real materials. But broadly speaking, if we have something that's strongly wetting, then the water moves in as a percolation process. It becomes mixed wet. It remains a percolation-like process. And it's only when you move towards more strongly hydrophobic or oil wet conditions that you flip towards something that's principally invasion percolation. And that is going to have major consequences for flow potential. Thank you very much.